In the universe, there's a lot of things you can always expect to go together, like milk and cereal, bacon and eggs, Drake and Josh, or me and Fire Emblem. EXCEPT YOU! You know I'll always take any possible chance to talk about it. So, Fire Emblem got DLC. Not the first time it happened in the series, but it's three houses we are talking about. If I get an excuse to play more of it, well, come in! Announced it just slightly before the game released, coming out in four different waves. It is sold only, and only as a season pass, and I honestly dislike this decision. There are things in the season pass I like to classify as unnecessary. I don't want to pay for them because I don't need them. I've beaten this game five times already. Does it look like I need items or extra auxiliary battles to help me? I am not too enthusiastic about paying for glasses for Violet. Unfortunately, there is only one option. Buy the entire season pass. If I already paid for it, then might as well make use of all there is to offer. So how about I give you a quick rundown of what you can expect, and then we get to the main course. Stat boosters! Again, if it was for me, I would have gotten them. But I won't deny that they are quite powerful. Extra tube movement? Pfft, yes, please. If you don't consider yourself the sharpest Fire Emblem player, or going to a higher difficulty intimidates you, I think these items do more than enough to alleviate things for you. And the same goes with the new auxiliary battles. In a way, they remind me to the Golden Gave and the Exponential Growth DLC maps from Awakening. You get much more gold upon their completion, and it's easier to make your units stronger. Enough to make them overpowered, I'll say. Take in mind that the enemies are stronger than they should be here. But with high risk comes high rewards. Next on the list, we've got customs. So answer me something. Have you ever wanted to dress your students like a basketball team? Have you ever wanted to lead an army full of maids and butlers? I got fantastic news for you! A decent addition! It's just cosmetic at the end of the day, and they don't affect unit performance. But I won't deny I got a few laughs or made decent use of it every chapter. Although a part of me wanted this to be more varied. Like making customs of past Fire Emblem characters. I would have been blown away by an Edelgard Hector or an Ephraim armor for Dimitri. But alas, that is not the case here. So I hope that they will expand on this on future games. Because some of the customs here are... <laughs> George. Another addition you get with the Season Pass is the option to play with the dogs and cats scattered throughout the monastery and get rewards. I don't get it. Remember that sauna in Garak Mach that always seemed like you could interact with it but never could? Thanks to the DLC you can finally make use of it. By bringing a partner with you and winning in a very simple minigame, you can make Byleth and your partner win more weapon experience throughout tutoring. Not a bad addition, honestly. I did notice quite a difference after making use of it. But one of the features that should be highlighted is extra playable characters. You can finally make use of Jeritza in battle. Available only in the Crimson Flower route. Join the Adrestian Empire now. And Anna, everyone's favorite merchant makes a triumphant return to the battlefield. Take in mind, Jeritza is a free unit you can get even if you don't own the DLC. Anna is the only one that asks for money out of you. Very fitting of her character, I gotta say. And the last piece of the first three waves of DLC that is worth mentioning, although it was a free update, is the inclusion of Maddening Mode. Was an hard mode not hard enough for you? Do you hate yourself enough to leave your whole being into the hands of foreign Jesus? Be my guest! The option is there and is available for everyone. But the real deal, the most anticipated thing from the season pass was the promise of a new story, with new playable characters, a new area to explore, and returning classes. And that's what we got! Fire Emblem Cinder Shadow. Will this thing make the entire season pass worth it? I'll try to be as subjective as I can. 
So without spoiling anything, I'm gonna answer a few questions I was totally asked. Is Cinder Shadows a new route? No. This is a side story that takes place after the assault on the Holy Mausoleum. It is treated as its own thing, with its own save file set apart. And you can even play it simultaneously with a route from the main game. Does the story of Cinder Shadows add to the overall story of Three Houses? Yes, it does. The core conflict will iron out a few questions that remain if you paid attention to the lore of Oatland. Will I get even more from my favorite characters in Cinder Shadows? The answer is yes! And no. The characters you already know and love are here, but in a limited number. There is no bias to any of the lords, so I found it to be very neutral in that aspect. They do interact or have something to say about what's going on around them, but the focus falls on the new house, the Ashen Wolves. I enjoy them a lot, so even if there's not a lot to expect from the familiar faces, I think they did a great job with these four. Now that I'm done with those questions I didn't make up, you might be wondering, how does Cinder Shadows play? If you have already played the game, or at least watched my video on it, you already know that Three Houses is one of the most versatile games in the series, in terms of how you can build your units from beginning to end. Well, Cinder Shadows throws it out of the window and opts to take a more classic Fire Emblem experience. With this, I mean that the entire adventure is extremely streamlined. There are no lessons, no activities, nor giving gifts to your students. You can explore the new area, the abyss, between chapters. But this does not compare at all to how Garrick Mach affects the game. This means you get no extra advantages that you would otherwise get in the main campaign. Fire Emblem Cinder Shadows throws you in the middle of the forest with only a knife and a lighter. What you're given is all you have. And how you can get more depends entirely on your skill as a player. You don't get to choose the students that will accompany you. You don't get a saying in what skills they will have. Support conversations? Unavailable. Every character has a small selection of classes. Weapon experience is locked with no way to level it up. You only get a limited number of gambits. And it's up to you to find a way to get more money for better equipment. And you know what? I felt nothing but pure adrenaline the entire way. That's the most important thing I gotta address. Cinder Shadows is hard. I mean, yes, I played this in hard mode. Gotta make it clear before people think I'm overreacting. If I describe you my experience from this decision, this was a fantastic and fully enjoyable challenge that got my last two brain cells on constant action. When you beat a game for the first time, it's only natural that future playthroughs will become easier, because you now have a better understanding of how the mechanics work, and you know how to exploit them. Here, I already had the experience of five playthroughs under my belt, and Cinder Shadows gave me a run for my money. That's because of how limited it is. I couldn't find a way to make things easier for me. As soon as you begin, you're instantly throwing hands with tough opponents. But that's precisely what made me savor every second I spent with this side story. The maps are long, they are hard, and they will make you scream. Pero estás hablando de Fire Emblem, ¿verdad? Sí. Do you see this? Does it look fair to you? Try to find a way out of this one without losing a single unit! But guess what? I was able to find a way. When you select car mode, you are asked to be very familiar with the mechanics. You need to understand every character, every gambit, and every skill and effect to use them to your advantage. I also noticed that in this DLC there was a huge emphasis on the weapon triangle, because of the skills that the enemies and your units carry. So that's another classic Fire Emblem factor you have to consider. But even so, regardless of how little liberty you have to build characters, at no point did I ever feel I was put in an impossible situation. When everything seemed to be over, there was always that one little thing that could make the difference. <laughs> Look, I don't want to intimidate less experienced players with this. 
I enjoy a good challenge as long as it's balanced. That's why I go for hard mode. If that's not your thing, but still want to try the DLC, don't let anyone judge you by lowering the difficulty or playing in casual mode. As long as you enjoy it, I think that's what matters. Unfortunately, not everything is perfect. If I can give a genuine complaint, is that Cinder Shadows didn't fix a specific problem prominent in the main game, and that is recycling maps. A few chapters here will be a side you're already familiar with, but at the same time, if I can justify a portion of this decision, is that these maps offer variety in a sense that the grand majority of them have different victory requirements other than route the enemy. This not only brought a fresh feeling to these maps, but this is also what contributed to the challenge I already mentioned. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Is Cinder Shadows worth its asking price? If you know me, I think you already know the answer. But I'll say no. Hold on, hold on, let me finish. The only reason Cinder Shadows is not worth the price is for one thing. This entire adventure is really short, and I'm not overreacting. You're paying for an experience that lasts less than 10 hours, in a game where every campaign lasts approximately 60 hours. And no, it's not that short because of the absence of exploration between battles like in Garrett Mock. The number of chapters is small. How small? One digit. It's that small. That's why I believe Cinder Shadows is not worth the price. On its own. Cinder Shadows is not just its own story. It was also designed to add more to the main game. The more you progress through it, the more you'll get. You can explore the Abyss in the main campaign and make use of its different buildings and even access to four <coughs> new great classes. The most important part at the end of the day is that you can recruit the Ashen Wolves into your own house. They can attend your lectures, go to the battlefield with you, and contrary to Anna, they have support conversations. It's a small change with a big impact, because that adds more to the value of the game. And that's where the DLC of Fire Emblem Three Houses is worth its price. There are new characters to explore, new ways to build your units, and much more to do in general. If you're still not sure, then ask yourself, do you have routes you still haven't played? Do you want an excuse to play more of this game? Then don't stop. Get the DLC, and I hope you enjoy it to the fullest. And remember, if you go for hard mode in Cinder Shadows, it'll be really, really hard. Pero estás seguro de que estás hablando de Fire Emblem? Te odio.